Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Suprajit Engineering Limited Q1 FI22 earnings conference call hosted by Anand Rati Shares and Stock Brokers Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Vijay Sarthi from Anand Rati. Thank you and over to you Mr. Sarthi. Thanks Nirav. Uh, on behalf of Anand Rati Research, I welcome you all to the Q1FI22 results conference call of Suprajit Engineering. Engineering. Uh, from the company side, we have Mr. Rajit Kumar Rai, the founder and chairman, Mr. Renes Mohan, MD and Group CEO, and Mr. Medapwa Gowda, CFO and company secretary. Uh, due to paucity of time, we will have this call for 45 minutes from now. Um, we will have an initial brief from Mr. Rajit Kumar Rai and others, and then we will follow it up with Q&A. Over to you, Mr. Rajit. Uh, for attending our Q1 uh, results con call, um, as uh, is the normal uh, routine, I will request first Mr. Mohan, our managing director, to make a brief comment on the operations, followed by Melapa, who will give a short brief on the financials, and uh, I'll follow it up with uh, a quick remark, and we'll open the questions quickly uh, as we need to wrap it up by 2.45. So with that, I'll start with Mohan. Mohan? Yeah, thank you. Uh, like what we have already published, you know, you would have seen that we have got a reasonably good quarter. Uh, there was a lack of traction in the domestic market, and uh, but I think to a certain extent it was made up by our exports and overseas market. So all in all, if you look at it, we had a reasonably good quarter. Now what I'll do is like uh, I do it usually, I'll take you through our division, and uh, I'll start with our Sena or Superjet Engineering non-automotive, primarily Westcon and our one of the Unit 9, which is a plant here in Bangalore. Overall, I would say we have done very well on a YOY basis on quarter on quarter. In fact, uh, this was the highest revenue that we have recorded in the history of Westcon for this particular quarter I'm talking about. So it was an exceptionally fantastic quarter. Uh, having said that, we still have a lot of supply chain and also its associated uh, operational issues. Sensors which are uh, one of the sensors that are required requires an IC, and I'll know, you know, that's a big uh, subject which is going on in the automotive market. Therefore, we also are a part of that uh, problem being faced that uh, we also required this IC. So we are having shortages. Coupled with that, we also have the resin shortages that has been plaguing us. And then uh, to compound that, the port congestion and container shortage issues in US. So despite all this kind of, I would say, headwinds that we face, I think we did a reasonably good quarter. And the way it's going on, I think the second quarter is also looking pretty robust. If I can move on to our uh, uh, automotive exports, which is Superjet uh, Europe and uh, Superjet Automotive Limited. Um, basically, um, our past quarter showed again a good results, and this was against the odds of the odds of the very similar problems. You know, the same old thing: IC shortages, uh, and hence now it was not because we are using those ICs. It was stoppages or reduced call offs at the OEMs, both in the EU and the US. This was again coupled with severe container shortages and exorbitant, uh, I would say, shipping costs. Here too, I expect our second quarter to be better than last year, but I don't think we would be reaping the full benefits of the new launches and their volumes, which we had anticipated. We are also on the verge of winning some new contracts with some of the marquee customers uh, for new programs in Europe. Uh, if I can move on to the next one, which would be 3.5 Lux Light, this uh, remains our uh, Achilles heel. Uh, even with EU slowly opening, we do some amount of movement there, but 
it is not to the extent that we would have hoped moving on to the domestic front i'll start with the phoenix lamps division uh, again on a overall on a domestic front i think it would be incorrect to compare our results with the previous year first quarter obviously it is going to be uh, you know good and it's nothing to say that we waved some magic wand then so but what i'm more interested in comparing it with our 2019 levels the industry in itself when i looked at it particularly the two wheeler portion has not yet recovered to the 2019 levels therefore obviously it got reflected on our performance too uh, material cost price increases continue and uh, in some of the cases we have been able to negotiate an increased price from some of the customers and in some of the cases the negotiations are still going on regarding after market traditionally our performance in the first quarter would be tepid which is normal and but this time it was a bit compounded by the fact that we increased the prices in the marketplace now we being the market leader we thought you know we need to uh, take the lead even on this therefore we took the first step of correction due to the increase in material prices when as leaders we did it the competitors uh, who are behind us also took time but they also have increased so there is a lag between us and them in terms of time lag uh, for the price increases that we have done having said that august 15th is traditionally when we launch our uh, usual trade schemes as we call it so from 15th august we will be launching them the idea is to fill up the shelves for the upcoming season so i would expect to see an uptick going there on to the uh, you know in the uh, we had this severe shortage of oxygen uh, with the government mandate uh, that we cannot use oxygen and all the stuff therefore we wanted to be self reliant on oxygen so we have installed two oxygen plants one in chennai one in noida the chennai plant has been commissioned and the noida plant uh, o2 uh, plant would be shortly commissioned moving on to the domestic cable division we did reasonably well here given that uh, again the two wheeler oem optics were low but interestingly i am sure that you are keeping track two of our customers who have substantially increased their export market share therefore with those two customers we also did pretty well our expansion plans at narsapura got slowed down this was primarily because of the second wave of covid and we are but we are very confident that we'll be having our plant ready by the time customer launches uh, happen and the volumes also pick up uh, like in our phoenix lamps division here also the material cost headwinds are there and uh, we have been able to negotiate and get some of the price increases from customers so uh, that's one good news going forward uh, maybe one or two customers are left behind and we should be able to cover that up also uh, moving forward i would say overall we wanted to be a bit cautious with all the uncertainties of the potential covid third wave chip shortages material prices container shortages you know shipping issues and a lot of these things are there therefore Uh, i would rather be a bit cautious having said that as a team suprajit we continue to be prepared uh, good news is that about 95% of our employees have been uh, vaccinated once and uh, about 45 to 50% have been uh, have already got that double dose of vaccination therefore hopefully you know it's going to be that uh, raksha kavach for all of us uh, on that's on the employee front and to shore up our capabilities and capacities that work is also going on so that we will be ready when the economy opens up of course we are definite that the economy will open up but the caveat is always when thank you thank you mohan melapa yeah thank you good afternoon everyone we announced the quarterly financial results for uh, june 2021 the results are exactly not comparable with the the corresponding quarter of previous year due to covid lockdown scenarios the consolidated revenue for the quarter ended june 2021 was 362 crores 
as against 177 crores for the corresponding previous year, recording a growth of 104%. The consolidated operational EBITDA was 49 crores for the quarter ended the 30th June 2021. The standalone revenue for the quarter ended June was 209 crores as against 87 crores for the corresponding previous year, recording a growth of 139%. The standalone operation EBITDA was 32 crores for the quarter ended 30 June 2021. We are also happy to inform you that overall group debt level has reduced to 301 crore as against 354 crores last year, June 2020. For further queries, if any, you may approach me directly even after this call. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Melissa. I think uh, from my, my side quickly, I would uh, say that our Q1 performance has been satisfactory against all the odds all, I think, uh, auto component uh, manufacturers had. Uh, divisionally as well, we had a good quarter, uh, maybe accepting 3, 4 and last slide. The outlook for current quarter, you know, although the uncertainties exist, I would still say is quite good. I think July and so far in August things have been fairly decent. We have been able to manage to, you know, crank up volumes uh, and see that our dispatches take place uh, despite all the odds. So overall, I think uh, despite the odds that we are facing, as Mohan has uh, uh, elaborated more, uh, we still feel that Q2 should be okay and uh, subject to COVID uh, and continued such issues, I think the year also looks fairly decent. So with that, I'll let the questions come on, and we will specifically answer the questions of all the participants. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown <coughs> telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Participants, you may press star and one to ask the question. The first question is from the line of Deepak Lalwani from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks. A couple of questions. Uh, uh, firstly, congrats on the strong performance in the, in the SENA division. Uh, so I wanted your commentary on the, the margin trajectory in the SENA division, uh, given that, you know, uh, this, this division is seeing now a good turnaround. Uh, uh, and, and the last two quarters, we had about 21 and 16% uh, kind of uh, margins here. Uh, what should be the margin expectations here? Um, uh, good afternoon, Deepak. I think, uh, you know, uh, just one or two quarters, um, uh, frankly don't make the whole story but the challenges that we face today are uh, are not normal I would put it that way in the sense that today for example uh, you know we are buying I see some of the sensors at prices which are pretty uh, beyond the price at which we settle with the customers for example just to make sure that the customer lines keep running we have issues the container costs are something like five or six x today to move material from whichever part of the world to whichever part of the world so the margins variation you will see from quarter to quarter i think that needs to settle down only when the the you know and and the plastics prices engineering plastic prices have gone through the roof mm -hmm. so you know you saw 20% last quarter you see 16% this time i don't, you know, it's, I don't want to say what it will be. So there will be some kind of an ups and downs in this. So I think this seesaw will have to settle down. I think we'll have to wait for a couple of quarters. But my overall view is that as a SENA division, we will uh, should be able to match whatever as a group we are doing, which is, again, you know, 14 16% uh, as, as a reasonable thing to do on a, what I would call as a normalized basis. On a quarter to quarter, there will be fluctuation sure. under these conditions, yes. Yeah, that's very helpful, sir. So, second question uh, was uh, on a European uh, lamps business, Luxlight and Trifia. Uh, you had, uh, uh, Mr. Mohan had mentioned in the initial remarks about the challenges there and also, you know, you talked about in the press release. Uh, wanted to, uh, you know, uh, know your comments on what options we have now to turn around that business 
and if at all a provisioning is required, uh, you know the quantum of provision that we will have to take care. It's difficult to comment on the provisioning, if at all. I think uh, you know we work with our statutory auditors who are E and Y, and we take always a conservative approach on these matters. Yeah. Uh, having said that, I think in terms of Trifa and Luxlight, I mean I have to step back a little bit. Uh, you know, uh, go back uh, five, six, seven years ago when we acquired was that we will have a you know significant front end out of Europe for the Western world. That was the original uh, thought process or the strategy, which when we acquired also we felt it was a reasonable strategy to continue with it. And uh, the issues that happened was that the pricing pressures that are there in, in, in any auto component business and to set up a full-pledged or a manage a full-pledged operational uh, and, you know, uh, entity out of Europe, uh, you know, it's, <laughs> what do I, I don't want to use the word uh, white elephant, but, you know, it's a bit of a challenge. Mm -hmm. So we scaled it down last year, as you know, uh, by yeah. shutting down one warehouse and moving everything yeah. into the other warehouse. We are continuing to monitor that situation to see. see what's also happening in Europe is that, um, you know, with all the restrictions, there's a lot of um, retails are uh, going either online or going different ways. So there is an amount of leakage in business as well. So all these challenges are faced by it. So <clears throat> what we are trying to do today is as a change of strategy is that we will uh, try to do more and more direct exports, uh, both OLM and direct. Uh, that has been successful, as you know, uh, people like Osram and, uh, you know, even uh, um, uh, you know, other major uh, 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 international customers are buying more and more from us. So as this scales up, that to some extent may have to be scaled down because that cost uh, structure may not work uh, completely. But having said that, we still have to have some kind of a warehouse in Europe and some kind of a front end in Europe for the Western world. So we are still assessing it. I think uh, either mid-year or end of the year, we'll come to a final stage on that, I would say. Sure. So finally, I get back in the before I get back in the queue. Uh, is it uh, fair to assume now uh, the overall Phoenix Lamps margin should come back to the normalized level, given that you know the challenges that we had in the first quarter, the oxygen uh, availability and other things are now normalized. So again, you know, if, uh, Mohan probably did not uh, touch on that. You must realize, you know, uh, halogen division um, uses significant amount of special gases you know, Krypton and uh, all of them. Mm -hmm. Those prices have all gone 5, 6, 7x. I mean, it's not 10%, 20% increases. So what has happened is that some part of it has been certainly passed on to customers. With some of them, we have a long-term pricing agreement where it is difficult to change the pricing till end of those contracts. So it's a blended thing. So today, I mean, um, I, I'm sure, you know, people who are on this call who are invested in auto component business, the commodity prices uh, are uh, something unprecedented and unseen in the past. So we are trying our best to pass on most of those effects. As Mohan said, we've increased the prices also in the market recently. But there is always a little bit of, you know, unabsorbed cost. We, we are still uh, working with our customers uh, to get some of those uh, balanced things out. But uh, probably end of this quarter, we will know more clearly uh, whether we have been 100% successful or something we had to sort of absorb, that would depend on the margin pressure again on all the divisions, not just Phoenix Lamps. Fine, sir. sir. Appreciate your responses, sir. Given the paucity of time, I'll get back in the queue. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next question is from the line of Abhishek Jain from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, Sir, uh, despite higher cheap, uh, cheap than RM prices, your gross margin expanded. Yeah, I can't hear you. Sorry. Hello? Yeah. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Uh, so, uh, sir, uh, my question is related with the gross margin. Despite higher cheap and uh, RM prices, your gross margin expanded in this quarter. Uh, is it because of the higher mix of the aftermarket or better negotiation with the client? And will it be no, I, I, I think we have also mentioned in our business notes that there is some amount of past price increases have been sitting on this quarter's numbers. Because, you know, negotiation with customers goes on and we get from certain amount of a, you know, prior period uh, a date for uh, price increase. So there is some amount of that number in the first quarter. So that would also would have had some tailwind on that margin that you are uh, talking about. 
so that means the gross margin will uh, uh, contract uh, in the coming quarter it depends you know you must also realize in first quarter the volumes have been down we have had some past years uh, you know advantage but this quarter will hopefully and it has it to see the volumes will pick up again you know that will also give so it's difficult to say at this moment but again you know we have always been sort of stood by our uh, margin guidance and we still stand by that i think that's where it will be okay sir and sir in core cable business how was the revenue mix export versus domestic sorry can you repeat in core uh, cable business how is the revenue mix export versus domestic in core cable business is it i think we have given the total mix uh, yeah. in core cable business also it uh, you know our automotive business has grown uh, pretty nicely as you will see so obviously our export part of it would be you know slightly better than in the corresponding period in the past okay and the uh, sir in uh, phoenix uh, lamp division uh, revenue was weak in first quarter how how is the recovery is taking place and what capacity to lies and both noida and chennai plants are operating currently um phoenix lamps division volumes were generally in line yes it's uh, compared to on the cable division yes it probably is little less but then the cable division has got the strong automotive exports as well as uh, you know non automotive so i think uh, that's where it is seen as it but i think you should not see as a one quarter uh, it's also as mohan said we had actually a bad time with the oxygen shutdown from the government so we couldn't actually produce about two three weeks although there was business so we were able to really had to scramble to meet some of the customer requirements so all those things will get normalized now so i think the number would be slightly better uh, as far as the growth uh, you know which looks little muted in the first quarter will change going forward sir uh, in automotive cable business the company has added many products like electronic instruments uh, clusters cbs for the e2 wheelers and the bike the brake shoes so how much incremental revenue are targeting in fy22 from these products <sighs> Uh, mohan would you like to comment on our other products generally i mean they are all in the starting phases but mohan i'll let him comment okay uh, look if you are asking me to put a number and going forward number it would be difficult because as you would know that these are some of the products that we have entered into very recently having said that i would put it this way uh, let me take one by one the brake shoe we have the uptake is pretty good and in fact uh, it's got a good amount of traction uh, in the aftermarket we have introduced quite many models there moving on to the instrument cluster we are in the process of moving from mechanical instrument clusters to electronic instrument clusters in fact uh, we are launching three platforms of which in fact one platform has been launched another one is almost towards the re readiness of launch the third one is in process we are calling them as platforms as supra 1 supra 1.0 2.0 and 2.5 so these are what are going to come into the market as we go forward so we are in uh, discussion in uh, some of them pretty much in advanced stage some of them we have won the business in two wheeler and non automotive segments so that's what is happening uh, so overall um, on the gcbs in fact we would be launching you would have been seeing if you are on linkedin you would be seeing you know that there have been some teasers coming the teasers are all basically alluding towards launch of gcbs so we would be doing a limited launch of gcbs so that we want it to be tested in certain territories get more feedback and then do a much more wider launch we want to be cautious here okay sir uh so my last question is uh, related with the vascon so you have uh, uh, you are moving from the mechanical control cables to the electronic uh, control system and uh, you have also started supply electronic uh, total control in a us market and gearbox in agriculture equipment in brazil so uh, just uh, wanted to know how much increase in content per vehicle due to the shift and uh, value additions again mohan will you answer that uh, question yeah 
look it will be very difficult to answer in terms of content per vehicle because it doesn't work in like for example let us say i have a golf platform or i have a you know particular uh, platform with one of the automotive majors and i can claim okay my content per vehicle is going up these are all very disparate items you know it can be a lawn mower it could be a snow thrower uh, so that's our tractor so each one of them are different so it is very difficult to answer your question that way but if you are asking me a general question uh, how are we looking at this market i would put it this way there are two ways we are looking at this market number one how can we go beyond the ope segment or the outdoor power equipment segment that is one thing second thing is in ope how can we increase beyond cables and also with cables with cables we are doing the end uh, attachments mechanisms therefore we are providing the mechanisms so one classic case would be let us say we were giving a seeding cable uh, for the agricultural segment now we are looking at we have already developed and it's already under testing with some of the uh, customers where we give the gearbox which gets fitted to the end of it so now would that get enhanced by let us say instead of the power uh, going in from the main prime mover it goes from the motor possibilities are there therefore we can probably also fit a motor and give it and that's what customers are potentially going to ask us therefore we are getting ready therefore to answer your question it's a multi pronged uh, approach that we are doing there to ensure that we keep growing our business not just in cable but beyond cable okay sir thanks sir that's all from my side thank you participants you may press star and 1 to ask a question next question is from the line of amit hiranani from smifs capital please go limited sorry go ahead Uh, hello sir uh, once again uh, uh, good set of numbers congratulations to the whole team uh, basically uh, just wanted to you know uh, stretch through the last question of uh, you know new product initiation which we are doing so could you please highlight on what could be the uh, revenue potential of each product its uh, market size opportunities and on the competition angle also and uh, continuing with this could you please talk more about the capex capex requirements for new products and uh, for the whole year also yeah i think uh, mohan uh, did elaborate saying that you know putting a number is not easy when you are just starting on this business but let me just try to sort of uh, position ourselves in this business i think one product that he has talked about is um, you know digital speedometer the other product we talked about is um, you know uh, brake shoes i mean uh, these are all basic requirements in a two wheeler so the volumes one can always calculate but you know the question is what is the market share one will get we are in this than uh, the other products for example the the, the you, know, you know seating cable and the gearbox uh, the other products so like gcbs which we are launching in the after market the market potential is large but this is not a sprint where we'll get a percent market share tomorrow i think we are on a marathon on all these things we have got some businesses one whether it is for uh, gear boxes whether for some of the digital speedometers and whether it is for some of the brake shoes we do have you know initial orders coming in we are executing those orders some of them are likely to scale up with time so to say today that you know we will get a 10% market share in digital speedometer i think we will be talking too much out of line mm-hmm. so we are looking at as a long term investment a long term develop product development which will back till it get comes to some level in the next 3 5 whatever, whatever number of years that is number one capex you know some capex we have already done i think uh, it's all been sort of clubbed along with our overall capex stocks that we have done earlier and i think uh, uh, it goes on uh, for example our digital speedometer line is set up in our speedometer division itself we have additional space there uh, the clean rooms are set up uh, the production line is running so it's all been added as a as we go as we do it our uh, brake shoe plant is set up again in the unit 3 all those things have been done as a part of our general capex so if there is a major major order whether we need to go to a new place yes as you know we are uh, fairly financially strong and surplus so these decisions will be taken as and when those things happen so capex are as a part of the overall capex but uh, we are ready to make it whenever 
additional uh, capex is required and sir how much capex we are expecting for this fi22 and next financial year um this year i think we have not come out with a uh, full figure probably we will uh, we have only talked about uh, two add on cap capacity expansion one in narsapura and one in noida for the halogen there is other you know basically we have earlier commented that our uh, capex would be something like a 2% of our uh, annual sales for ongoing maintenance or minimal capex requirements it would be reviewed by september i think probably if there's any more major uh, capex beyond that is there between 2 3% of our sales i think we certainly will be talking in the market okay and sir uh, next is in in ar21 so mr jane james ryan stated that the uh, the cash is available for purchases and investments throughout the world so directionally in which areas we are actually looking for this inorganic opportunities i think we have uh, made these statements in the past and uh, you know our uh, appetite for uh, inorganic acquisitions continued to be there uh, we have also made a very clear statements and we still think that it is very much a facts of life is that uh, there are too many smaller or small medium auto component companies across the world consolidation will be the key customer wants a single solid supplier being able to deliver them in continents across the world and they don't want to have small suppliers delivering in one area not being able to deliver in another area i think that's where suprajit or you know suppliers of our size comes into picture and i think uh, this consolidation will continue and uh, jim has been uh, a hardcore just to you know you we are directionally clear answer he is a hardcore cable man for the last 30 years he has been cable right from capro to teleflex to kongsberg to legit and plat and then to us that is his strength and the fact that he is there i think you can probably put two and two together as to what we are doing just one last question sir are have you started supplying to any electric vehicle oems any product yes we have We we have supplies to electric OEMs. Yes, without going cables, right? Yeah, cables. There are. We I think some of our other products are also being. Mon, would you like to touch on that? Sure. Uh, I would like to basically bifurcate this into cable and non-cable. Cable being our strength area, as in a traditional area. Obviously, uh, the two-wheeler, wherever the cables are being fitted, they have come to us, and uh, whether they are small customers or big customers. in materials we have uh, risen up to the occasion and supported them now going to beyond cables which is what we have be always been talking about while cable remains our strength we should also look at diversifying ourselves beyond cables for for that we again there have been uh, supplier uh, customers who have come to us and whom we are supporting with specifically the things that i talked to you about supra 1.0 and supra 2.0 are quite many of them are for ev customers and other for one ev uh, two wheeler we are supplying the brake shoes brake shoes and sir what all cables actually we are supplying to an electric scooter uh, i mean depend yeah. upon the type because each one oem has got different ways of doing it some have got uh, you know fuel lock opener some seat opener like that it is different it is all diff- uh, it differs on the uh, mm-hmm. kind of configuration that they have got okay that design for lot of people to so as to say mm-hmm. okay all, all right thank you sir thank you thank you very much participants you may press star and one to ask a question next question is from the line of pratik kothari from uni portfolio management service please go ahead oh. hi good afternoon sir Uh, so my one question on our uh, mechanical cables the relevance of it so we see a lot of electronics being introduced in vehicles and uh, a lot of functions where if you press a button there's a function which happens at the other end so i i believe the basic mechanics here is electricity is passed through wiring harness and there's a solenoid at the other end so is this a risk in terms of our mechanical cable the presence of it in a vehicle it's a it's a long debate uh, i think uh, uh, suppose we could have another offline call on this if you like but uh, let me say this in uh, as brief as possible let's say in an automotive today 
uh, there could be an application of anywhere from 10 to 12 to 20 stations of uh, cables. Uh, if I see today, compared to let's say two years ago, because three years ago maybe there were less EVs than what we are today in automotive world, particularly whether it's in China or even the European market. We have not seen any current cable applications are changed. Let me put it that way. In fact, we have also seen some one or two interesting new cable applications. For example, for EV, they want a manual override to open their charging flap, for example. That has come as an extra one. What you would see as a button, what you rightly mentioned in terms of seeing that it's all electronics, it's only a starting point. Uh, what we see behind the scene is something totally different. I mean, uh, just to give you another example, you know, you press a button, your glass in your car goes up and down. You think it's all electronic. It isn't, actually. Even today, it isn't. So uh, it actually works through a mechanism. That mechanism requires a cable. So every door has a cable. So four doors, or five doors, has a whatever number of doors has five cables. So that has not changed. It's become more complex and more pricey because they want it to be absolutely noiseless. So that adds to the value. So, you know, you move your seat, so you think that there is some, you know, some internal electronic mechanism is moving. It's actually not. There is a mechanism which moves the entire slider thing, which requires a cable. So, I mean, it's, a, it's an ongoing argument. Our uh, reviews from time and time again only show today that in an automotive world, I think uh, the overall number of cable applications, considering today, for example, autonomous vehicle coming in, we expect that to go more only, not come down, actually. Okay, that is very interesting. Thank you. And so my last question, uh, last year, due to various reasons, the unorganized sector had faced certain issues, and hence we had seen substantial growth on the aftermarket, and we said the weaker hands are moving out, and hence we are gaining some opportunity. So do you see that reversing at least, I mean, given the uh, share that we have seen this year? See, last year what happened was there was a, you know, like a absolute lockdown, right, uh, for whatever 60 days or whatever number of days. And when it opened up, there was a suddenly a pent up demand shortages. So that's why there is a sudden surge. And probably some of these gray guys were not able to, you know, uh, restart their operation, whatever reason, I mean, or they don't want, didn't want to be GST non-compliant, for example. So all that really surged our requirement of aftermarket. Whereas this year, there was nothing like a national lockdown. It was all sporadic, sporadic here and there. So we've been feeding it in some ways or the other ways. So, you know, that kind of a surge has not been there. But I think we are at a level where we think that, um, you know, uh, the stronger is getting stronger and the weaker is getting weaker in this market. So we continue to, although if you look at our aftermarket business, that growth uh, doesn't look all that great uh, because there is no, you know, sudden, you know, surge in the demand like what we saw last year. It is more, uh, you know, I would call as a very um, labored growth, uh, but it is a good growth. We still continue to believe that the aftermarket will be solid as we go forward in this year. Fair enough. Sure. Thank you, sir, and all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Deepak Lalwani from Unify Capital. Please go ahead. Some new orders uh, that were packed uh, in two-wheeler and four-wheeler OEMs, both domestically as well as overseas, in the last quarter. Sorry? Uh, new orders, uh, which we uh, got uh, in the, both in the two-wheeler and the four-wheeler OEMs, both in the domestic as well as overseas. I don't think we can go into specific customers, but on a general way, I think I can ask Mohan to comment on the new business yes. of cables. Yes. Yeah. Sure. On the domestic front, I can very confidently say that uh, one of the major OEMs has reposed a lot of trust in us. In fact, they have very clearly told that for some of their future looking models, forward looking models, we would be 100% source. In fact, they have told us that puts us you know, uh, more responsibility. In fact, we were awarded uh, uh, the best supplier award uh, you know, uh, recently by that, that uh, marquee customer. Therefore, we are also in the process of a 
increasing the capacity for the customer because of the new orders that we are coming in. So that's on the domestic market front. And similarly, with the other customers, by and large, we are the first stop when it comes to cables. We all know about it. So also for the bulbs, as long as it is halogen bulbs. Therefore, that continues because we are in the market leader position. Now, uh, beyond cables is where we are looking at winning new businesses. And that's where uh, I would say that I'm pretty much happy with the way team has been able to go out into the market, convince the customers and get the orders for new products where it is beyond cables. So I'm pretty much confident there the way it's turning out. Now, going to uh, beyond uh, the shores of India, if I look at Europe, again, uh, one of the market customers, uh, we, are, uh, we are in the verge of, like I already said, we are on the verge of winning some business. In fact, uh, verbally, they have already called us up and told that, that we have won that business. It, the, the formalities has to follow. In terms of what's happening in the U.S. market, again, it's a different uh, approach like I had already explained. One is look at cable and cable-based assemblies and go beyond uh, and look at uh, things like gearbox, et cetera. Therefore, it's, it's a, it, each one of the areas, whether it's domestic in India, whether it is Europe cables, whether it is non-automotive cables in U.S., we our rules of games are a bit different as far as our game is concerned so to add to what uh, mohan has said i think uh, it's important to understand that at this moment globally most supply chain main managers of large companies are just trying their best to manage their existing supply chains to cater to the day-to-day -day requirements with the kind of challenges of whether it's IC or shipment shortages, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. The new launches are getting delayed, for ex and the the volumes are uh, not what was originally when launched are not what originally were told. So technically today we have actually a, a, a sitting on orders which, if it were based on their original estimate, would have been 30, 40, 50 percent higher. But it isn't. But despite that, our volumes are growing. That sort of gives an underlying uh, the current that when the situation changes for better, I think the volume growth will be much more robust. But at this moment, I would say that uh, the new business one are being executed at a lower volume, but we still are showing a growth. And in addition to that, few platforms are being launched worldwide by some of our current customers. And wherever there is uh, cable requirements are there, we are uh, in most of them, we have either quoted closely or some of them we have already won the business. Thank so you, the sir. pipeline really is helpful. still very strong, if to answer your question. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very helpful, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Participants, the next question is from the line of Chirag Shah from Realwise Financial Service. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. And sir, congrats for the set of numbers. Sir, uh, first, an apology. I missed the, the comment on this Suprajit 1 and Suprajit 2. Can you please brief uh, it again? What are you trying to imply from that? I think my line just got disconnected at that point. Yeah, of okay, fine. I think it's on the two models of our digital speedometer. I'll let Mohan to answer that question, uh, Chirag. Yeah, see, in... In electronic industry or electronic parts that we supply generally goes on platforms. Therefore, what happens is what gets into the gut would be almost similar on components. Therefore, there is some amount of standardization, but there would be very specific way that you are going to design in terms of how it looks for the customer. Therefore, the outer skin and the way it looks for different customers would be different, but the inside gut or the platform as we call it, would be, uh, is what we are talking about. So like you have this, you know, Microsoft version 1.0, 2.0, something similar to that. I'm just giving you a very gray example probably, but that's the way we are looking at it. So Supra 1.0 has got certain features capability. Now, all those features would not be needed by a customer. Therefore, we turn off some of the features or we switch on some of the features and give it to a customer. Similarly, Supra 2.0 will have all the features of Supra 1.0, but 
plus some additional features. Therefore, it is much more sophisticated, but it will also move up the price scale uh, and the development scale. Similarly, Supra 2.5. Therefore, if we don't have the entire basket uh, of you know offerings the, to the customer, it will be difficult because they would be having an entry-level bike or a mid-level bike or a performance bike. Therefore, depending upon that, the requirements for their end customer will also change. That's the reason we are doing it. As of now, Supra 1.0 is ready, made, already getting into production almost. Supra 2.0 already being presented to the customer. Supra 2.5 is under Anvil, on the Anvil. Yeah, this is helpful. So this, does this refer to new products and adjacent products or it also re refers to a different way of doing business with customers? No, no, this refer uh, I think I missed the point there. I agree. Uh, we are referring to instrument clusters or speedometers. Okay. So it is to speedometers as such and not in general as a whole business. It is uh, basically, no. you know, uh, multiple levels of, uh, you know, sophistication in um, digital speedometers. 1.0 would be an entry level. Uh, whereas 2.0 would be the next level and 2.5 will be the next higher end. So that's how it has been sort of designed to present to the customer, I think. So by this, uh, how will it help us in market share and also in the digital, in the speedometer, where are we in terms of market share? I presume over the years, a market share would have seen some decline given the way industry has changed. So if you can help us understand that uh, what are you... Uh, what, are you, what is your aspirational target that actually, you want to achieve with this strategy? Yeah. No, the point is, uh, Chirag, we are in uh, in uh, mechanical speedometers, right? We've been there in the, for a long time. And uh, that is our core business in terms of uh, in the speedometer so far. So as the speedometer business uh, moves towards digital, we want to be in that space. That has been the decision that we have taken, let's say, a year or two or a little over that we took and started developing these products completely in-house. And that product is currently being, you know, uh, sort of finalized or established at the first 1.0 level. That means that the entry-level digital speedometer that you would see in a motorbike or a scooter is that level. Then it goes up all the way. So uh, the idea is that as uh, uh, the speedometer businesses sort of switch into digital, we'll also in that space and that we will also get the market share of that business so that the market share that we would have possibly lost because of you know, mechanical speed instruments are going into digital, we will garner hopefully more than that in the digital space. So that is the basic uh, strategy for that particular little bit of our business. So would it be right at aggregate level when your strategy plays out over the next two, three years, Beach manual, beach speedo, digital. Overall, we are eyeing for upwards of forty percent of the industry market share. Is that no, a? Right we don't have. Of? I mean, uh, Chiraz, please understand. On speedometer, we have got only two customers. Yeah. So uh, we are not a big player in that. So we are just wanting to enter that business, and I think what we'll be going to do in digital speedometer in the next five years or so would be to get much higher share of business. Uh, in speedometer than what we have today with just two customers. That is the okay. idea. Okay, okay. This, this, this was helpful. Yeah. So the second question and was with with uh, uh, this Luxlight and Kifa. Now, mm -hmm. what exactly is the issue? Because we have been trying a lot to turn them around over a long, long period of time, but somehow we are not able to. So where it's does the pricing. problem lie? Is the brand I mean, a problem or no. It is market dynamics a problem as of date? And there is a pricing is issue. No, no, no. I think it's clearly an issue of pricing. The market will accept a certain level of price. It has kept on coming down over the period. Since we acquired uh, Phoenix Lamps to today, the price down might have been, I don't know, in depending upon the product range, anywhere from 30 to 50 to even more than that in certain cases. So because of the efficient manufacturing, we were continuing to be able to manage our margins in India. Whereas in the Western world, when you are trying to put that business and be competitive in European market against the Chinese and the Koreans, it is impossible to have the kind of infrastructure that you are having in Europe 
which the others do not have. So we have an extra cost sitting. So we are not competitive many a times. That's where uh, we have been starting to push direct exports more and less and less through uh, three, four and last slides. And as it became less, we shut down one warehouse and we'll continue to believe that we need to have at least one warehouse and some, you know, front end, uh, what is that size and scale we are yet to decide. Based on that, we'll take a final call. I think that's how it's going to work out. Because it's like, uh, you know, as the market prices come down, we need to, you know, refit ourselves into the market scenario. That's what is happening there. Sir, is it possible to indicate what kind of drag it is on our EBITDA level? Is it possible to indicate or broad indication? I think, you know, the point is that, you know, there is still a good EBITDA margin on the business we do with Trifa Lux Light in India. But if you look at the total supply chain, including the Trifas or Lux Light's extensors, that margin our current margin, which is where we have a concern, and that's why we are trying to work on it. Okay, sir. Thank you very much and all the best. Thank you. We'll take one last question. I think, gentlemen, we need to really rush out. If there's any question, we'll take one last question. The next question is from the line of VP Rajesh from Banyan Capital Advisors. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, my question is uh, regarding the digital speedometer. Um, you know, what is the who, uh, what is the size of the market, and who's the number one market share player in that? Mohan, will you answer? I think we just answered that question, but I will let Mohan to maybe re-elaborate on the point. Well, this is an evolving market. You can just look at, let us say, the total. Uh, if you are just looking at, let's say, two-wheeler market, there is a conversion ratio that you need to. Uh, assume and with that conversion ratio again you need to look at what is the base level cluster or speedometer uh, mid level and uh, you know higher level with tfts or something like that therefore we have done a detailed study on that but i don't think i would be able to explain it over a call like this now you can come on a call like later on you can establish a call if you really want to have a discussion on this uh, with the mohan or some of our technical team uh, but, you know, it's an evolving market. As you know, Indian markets are still, uh, uh, you know, in the two-wheeler, I don't know what is the current percentage, probably it's less than 10% is in digital space. So, but it will evolve with time, and so we are preparing ourselves for that space. That's all I would like to say. No, sure. I'm sure, I will take you up on that offer. I will have a separate call with Mr. Mohan. Thank you so much. So, Thanks. Thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate all your in continued interest in Suprajit and uh, uh, like to especially appreciate uh, you accommodating our change of time. We had to change it a couple of times as there were some conflicts with some other auto component uh, conferences. So we have changed the time. So apologies on that. And then we really thank you for attending this call. Thank you very much. I hand you over to the moderator uh, to conclude the call. Thank you. Thank you very much. On behalf of Andrade Shares and Stockbrokers Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us. You may now disconnect your lines. Thank, thank you. you.